All right, I am streaming. So hello, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to one of my live streams, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching it archived later. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing something every single day of Inktober. Today is day 22, and the official Inktober prompt uh, today is expensive. Uh, which just for whatever reason got me thinking of the dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park movies. They're genetically created, therefore they're expensive, etc., etc. It's a stretch, maybe, but it's where my mind went, and I'm letting myself roll with it. So I'm uh, sketching out a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex here. Uh, hello to Chrissy, Spider Boy, J. Andrew World, and Uncanny Kodiak. Nice to see so many regulars. That's that's really nice. That's really awesome. Hello, Jack Jones. So, uh, yeah, just uh, just banging out like uh, my my idea of where this is gonna go, and uh, uh, pretty soon I should be ready to uh, ink, which is the whole point of Inktober. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I wanted to do this earlier today, but I just. Uh, have so many sort of chores and errands and stuff that I need to get done that uh, it really just didn't, I couldn't get to it until uh, till now. And I honestly gave myself a little bit of a breather today. I, I allowed myself to sort of sleep in a little, um, which was amazing. <laughs> just uh, have, feel like I haven't been able to do that in a while. So, yeah, I think we're good here. Let's see. Uh, hello to all sorts of folks. Let's see. Uh, Rainy Shack, Shirley, Richard Hawker, Lowell Lucas Jr., Quinn London, James Gleason, Spooky Bones 224. Awesome, awesome. Look at all these folks. Uh, sorry, Uncanny Kodiak is saying that he tried to draw a $6 million man and it didn't come out too well. All I can say is, you know, this, this whole Inktober thing is really just all about trying to improve. It's not about trying to create a p perfect piece of art necessarily. I think several of my pieces have not come out well uh, due to various uh, things. Maybe I didn't plan it out quite right or maybe I tried to go too experimental and I, and I sort of lost focus. You know, there's lots of reasons why something like that will happen, but it's not that important. I mean, we've all got bad drawings in us and getting them out is one of the ways I, I sincerely think that we all learn to we go, you know what, I don't like this specific aspect. Well, next time I try to draw something like that, I'm probably not going to make the same mistake. So don't, I, I'm just saying, I wouldn't feel bad if it didn't come out the way you wanted it to. I will also say this, as an artist, when I look at like the, the things that I draw after I've had a little bit of time away from it, so that I can be at least a little objective about my own work, it's never as good as I think something was, and it's never as bad as I think something was. You know, we all draw at a certain level and some pieces come closer to what's in our mind and some pieces don't, but we sort of draw more or less at that same level. And so other people will view it differently than, than you do is all I'm trying to say. Anyway, those are some of my observations. Hello to Mandela Butterfly and uh, Son of a Red Shirt. So I bought myself some new brush pens today. I felt like the old ones had definitely uh, run their course and I will now begin utilizing those. Oh, so one thing I did today is uh, I did allow myself a little bit of relaxation time and I started watching a bunch of uh, Daredevil season three and uh, no spoilers, don't worry. Um, uh, but I will say that um, episode four has an amazing scene in it, just like a really long take. Maybe they hid some camera cuts here or there, but if they did, it was just flawlessly executed. It seems like an incredibly long take. It includes more than one fight scene, 
more than one fight scene in this long take, a long dialogue scene, and it appears to be, at least through the vast majority of this, the actual actors, not stuntmen. It's insanely choreographed. It's such an impressive accomplishment. Episode 4, as soon as you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's amazing. All right. Oh, wow. Look at this. Uh, sweet Lime Juice, super generous. Hit me with a super chat. Um, says, you should look up Satoshi Khan. You don't have to, though. No, um, I I did look that up after it was mentioned last night. And I, it, as long as it's the person I'm thinking of, uh, director of animated films, right? Like um, Paprika. If I hope I have that right. Please let me know if, if I'm thinking of something else. But um, looks to uh, have some some gorgeous, gorgeous uh, animated film work. If it's the person I'm thinking of. Hello, C. Kim. Hello, name pending. Hello, JP. How'd you spend that 70 bucks? I haven't spent anything that I've got here yet, but anything that I've gotten in the super chats has all sort of gone into a fund to um, get basically... Uh, a new microphone for the show and also like just some other pieces that like I could utilize when making um, more episodes And also, I bought myself a ton of amazing jewelry and cheeseburgers. Let's see. Okay, some folks are saying something true. Whoa, see, Kim, you're drawing? Uh, if, you, if you're able to, you know, like, put, put a link up. Uh, I think a lot of us would be curious. Um, you're the uh, you're the hero of uh, Inktober this year because of that uh, super generous uh, the super chat you gave to the show. You're you're the you're the hero. Yep, you, hello, Mr. Yuck, and uh, Jay Andrew World says, I'm, I've been trying to draw a bathroom door at a Mexican dive bar and failing. You'll get there. Don't give up. I, I have faith in you. Hello, Charles Edwards. Sincerely appreciate having uh, so many of you here in the chat room so that, uh, I don't know, it's, it, it keeps it interesting, keeps me motivated, uh, love seeing new faces and, uh, and recurring regulars alike. Excuse me, that was a small belch, that's disgusting, but um, so the, tonight my fiance made us an amazing dinner. She made a... Uh, a relatively recent favorite, I think, of both of ours, uh, poutine. Uh, very popular in Canada, not as popular in other places. She's really good at it. She made it with actual bacon today. It was so good. Milos asks, what's a dive bar? A dive bar is basically just a uh, cheap hole-in-the-wall type of joint. You know, it's nothing fancy. It, it's just functional. It's the kind of place that some... Some locals go, maybe it's a little shady, you know, things like that. It's just a cheap place. Um, let's see. Uh, some really nice comments going around here. That's, that's so nice. See, Kim, you, you've been tattooing for 15 years? I didn't realize that. That's amazing. Wow. Um, got a lot of respect for that like you, you're drawing in such a permanent such a permanent medium it's oh sometimes it honestly stresses me out like thinking about uh, tattoo art um, but 
when I see good tattoo art, it is something exciting. My friends, uh, Tony Moore, a uh, comic book artist, uh, some of you may know that name, uh, and his wife, uh, Kara, have uh, been getting these amazing full body tattoos, both of them, by, um, oh, I'm going to forget how to pronounce his last name, but he's a painter, he does some uh, tattooing, uh, Jeff Goguer, I think that that's how it's pronounced. Either way, like their their bodies look amazing. It's just so beautiful. See, I could use some cheap drinks, says Mandela Butterfly. Yeah, yeah, we all could. Um, Kurt Swinghammer, don't know that name. See, Kim, you own and operate two shops? Okay, that helps explain how you were able to be at least generous. If you own and operate two shops, you must be fairly successful at being a tattoo artist. That's, that's so nice to learn. Honestly, that's a little bit of a relief because I felt like you were so generous it made me like nervous but like this makes me feel a little bit better like that's so nice to hear that you're in a good situation like that uh, uh noah nk says who is he drawing i'm just drawing a, a t-rex dinosaur uh and and my thinking is that it's specifically like Maybe the T-Rex from, from the Jurassic Park movies because uh, that was uh, probably pretty expensive to create. Today's prompt word was expensive. Anyway, that's that's where my mind went is like what would be something like almost like one of a kind expensive to create. Um, and this is sort of where my, my mind went. Um, probably because that last Jurassic World movie... Uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but it involves people trying to buy dinosaurs, like bidding on them. Uh, by the way, in my opinion, that last one, probably the worst of the, the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. I did not care for that. Like, it, 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 it's not like that it looked bad or anything. It just, uh, it was just too dumb. It's too dumb for me. I didn't feel like the original Jurassic Park movie was a dumb movie. I felt like it, it took the idea of working with genetics as science, like in a very serious direction, actually. I mean, Michael Crichton was exploring a real concern with sci-fi, which is often how the best sci-fi comes about. So I liked very much that original Jurassic Park movie, and I felt like the latest one was really aggressively dumb aggressively dumb that's me yeah evil arms dealers auctioning off dinosaurs it you know and if that's where they started or something like that like you you sort of like okay that's the kind of movie it is it's just that it's been going in such a weird way um it doesn't work for me you liked the jurassic hello alan young um Oh, Noah drew a dinosaur on Friday. That's fantastic. Uh, look, there are definitely worse movies out there. It just isn't really working too well for me personally at this point. Like, they've just gone in such a strange direction as they've moved forward with these Jurassic World movies. I wish there was a way to know exactly what like 
dinosaurs looked like when they were alive. I wish we had somehow had the ability to be 100% sure. You know, obviously scientists are constantly making discoveries that refine what we know about them, and, and I think that's awesome. It would just be really amazing if we somehow had the ability to know what these creatures that lived and, like, lived for longer than we've we humanity have even been on this earth like what, what, what were they what was the world like like i don't know sometimes it really like gets my mind going like thinking about how long the earth has been around and like that like for millions upon millions of years dinosaurs were just like the dominant species that's just fascinating oh richard thank you so much richard hawker with a super chat that's really really kind that's really kind uh, um, Clay says that he can't stand the feathers. I mean, but that's probably realistically, like, based on what we know now, like, dinosaurs very likely had a form of feathers. I mean, it seems, it seems like that's just the truth. And so, like, we grew up with them thinking that they looked like lizards, but they may not have really looked that way at all. So it's sort of just... I'd be curious what the truth is, basically. That's all I'm saying. In Jurassic Park 3, they started to um, make some of those adjustments based on what we know now. They started making the uh, Velociraptors have... They weren't exactly feathers, but they were sort of close to feathers. Um, that was kind of cool. Let's see. Uh, Alan says, this is like an art class. You know, I wouldn't quite say that. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly trying to teach anyone anything because, you know, that's just not how I've set this up. You know, I'm not setting myself up as a fantastic artist. I'm just doing a personal challenge, which is to do Inktober and hopefully become a better artist. I'm always trying to improve. And it's an opportunity for me to live chat and talk to my viewers and, and see what they're curious about. Um, you know, if people ask a specific art related question, I am happy to discuss uh, what I know, but I'm not trying to set this up exactly like an art class where, you know, if you watch, you will learn lessons. That's, that's really not what I've been doing. Um, it's more just uh, the only reason I'm live streaming the art is just to sort of uh, keep myself honest, you know, uh, just prove like, hey, the idea for Inktober is to sort of ink something every single day. And if I live stream it every day, then you'll know that, hey, he he did it <laughs> as compared to if I just pulled out, you know, an old drawing from like, I don't know, this is probably like a, a year ago or something. I, I drew uh, the doctors from Doctor Who one time or tried to draw Ray from Star Wars, or like, what else do I have back here? Uh, Grimlock, you know, like, but these are old drawings, but I, so I'm not trying to pass those off as anything uh, that I'm doing for this year's Inktober. I wanted to just live stream to sort of be honest about it and have an opportunity to uh, potentially connect with any of you. Let's see, Jacob Roller says, any tips on some of the best ways to improve? I think um, the biggest thing you can do is don't let yourself stagnate by trying to approach it the same way all the time so just draw from life uh, every once in a while draw from life um, find models try to do timed poses so that you're not tr like taking your time on every single one you're trying to do fast so that you get gesture and then slow so that you get shadow and texture and then also every once in a while give yourself the freedom to set real life aside and loosen up by just drawing what you want to draw so that it has energy. Um, th those are some of the things you can do to improve. And honestly, the biggest thing you can possibly do is just draw as often as possible. As often as possible, and you'll definitely find improvements. Yes, Mandela Butterfly, I insist you use the bathroom. Uh, shark shark fin bites says it was flat on the bottom jaw and ab unable to move hmm. I hear the t-rex had a tongue that did not move around oh oh well that's interesting the tongue was 
just sort of like a so like like more like an undulating texture maybe or something like that uh that's interesting well i definitely didn't illustrate it that way the tongue has a little bit of a lift but uh yeah have you heard about the theory that iron fist and luke cage were canceled because they did not survive the snap i did not hear that I do not believe that um, because if Marvel was trying to operate by those rules, you know, I think that they'd have to affect everything, which includes half the supporting cast on Daredevil and Jessica Jones and the cast on S.H.I.E.L.D. and Runaways and Cloak and Dagger. No, the TV shows are all just going to be set in a world where, I mean, let's face it, like, it's very, very, very likely that the the Thanos snap will somehow eventually be undone in which case a lot of the characters that didn't face Thanos will never even know about it so I think that like we're seeing the TV shows from that perspective that's how I think about it I could be wrong maybe the, th the snap doesn't get undone but it just seems like realistically it kind of has to the TV shows are part of the Seinfeld universe. Thank you, Voodoo Zombie. Hello, JS. Uh, and I just don't think that they would, like, sort of announce a fake cancellation and then just go, like, surprise, it is still around. We, uh, we didn't really cancel it. Those characters were just temporarily dead from Infinity War. It's like, that's some bad marketing where you're going to lose audience loyalty. So from a marketing perspective, that would be a very bad idea. Now, um, the more I've read, the more it looks like those shows did not have very good ratings. It's hard to tell because Netflix never reveals exactly what they were, but there's a lot of industry speculation to that effect. So, um, you know, I hope that Marvel sort of sees that there's still potential with those characters, uh, including their supporting casts, and and does Heroes for Hire or Daughters of the Dragon, I hope, we'll see. I think it's worth, you know, giving a season to. But uh, I'm not the guy with the purse strings. I know um, Iron Fist was among the least popular uh, recent Marvel things, along with, like, you know, Inhumans. And Inhumans, they just dropped the ball on, but fine, let's just forget about it and move forward. I didn't think Iron Fist was that bad. Um, it, it worked for me. I wanted the martial arts to be better. I wanted, uh, I wanted a little more out of it, but I really just like that character. I don't think Finn Jones was flat out bad. Um, uh, and I really, really liked, um, Misty Knight on that show. I thought that that actress, Jessica Henwick, I think I forget her name exactly, but, uh, I thought she was great. She was very charming and interesting, likable, exciting to see on screen. So I would love to see more of her. Um, either a Colleen and Misty Knight show or a, uh, or a Heroes for Hire type show. I would love to see one of those. But I don't know. All right, what else is getting discussed? Um, a horror anthology TV series about the Darkhold would be cool. Yeah, they introduced the Darkhold on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so that, that that's definitely like a way that they could go. And, um, you know, there, there's there's plenty of good uh, horror characters in the Marvel Universe. Um, obviously, Sony has the rights to Morbius, but they could do stuff with um, Ghost Rider, the Night Stalkers, or Man-Thing. Uh, all sorts of interesting monsters. 
William Sanderson and Brian A. join. A damage control show, uh, Clay suggests. Da damage control would be great, especially if you just, um, you don't even have to have them on the show. But damage control was originally uh, revealed to be co-owned by two businessmen, Tony Stark and Wilson Fisk. And how cool would that sort of be, you know, in the Marvel Universe to, to say that, like, these two guys did sort of have, like, controlling interests and, and they're each maybe trying to have maybe people that they appointed to the board of directors jockey for control or something. I think that could be really interesting. Um, anyway. Uh, I know what you're saying there, Guy Fella. I also read the original Crichton novels. They are a little trashy, but I also do think he was trying to explore some real science, uh, like, underneath it all. Uh, that was sort of Michael Crichton's stock and trade, like, taking, uh, you know, some some very well-researched real science and then trying to blend that with, um, you know, just sort of uh, soap opera type drama. So I know I said I don't talk about technique too much, but I did try there to use my whole arm and to pull instead of like push um, and like or use my wrists. Uh, and it gave me a pretty good amount of control to give that like sort of whole overarching line on the back of this dinosaur. Now, it's not perfect, but um, it's better than what I've been able to do in the past. That's all. What artists out there do you like that draw great dinosaurs? I can think of several. Um, Walt Simonson does great dinosaurs. Frank Cho does amazing dinosaurs. And going back to somebody like Frank Frazetta, I mean, maybe that's a little more fantasy, but he was really fantastic too. Those are some that I like. Bill Watterson. Hey, great Paul Cara Bear comics. You're right. Bill Watterson did draw some amazing dinosaurs. Wow. His Calvin and Hobbes stuff is so good. Um, by the way, that's probably somebody that I will do a comic tropes episode about in the relatively near future. Um, I think that there's a lot that we can learn by, by looking at what he did. I won't do tons of episodes probably that are about um, comic strips, but that is where comic books came from, so I think it's always fair game to um, use as, as fodder for episodes. James Gurney. Oh, okay. That's an interesting one. William Stout is the beginning and end of dinosaur artists. Hmm. Oh, and who's the guy that did um, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs? He, he was obviously quite good. Superman was originally written as a... Superman was originally actually a comic book, but it quickly became a comic strip that, that ran side by side, and a lot of the stuff that was introduced in the strip came there first and then made its way into the comic. Of course, um, what's their names? Um, Siegel and Schuster were considering developing Superman as a comic strip. Maybe that's what you were referring to.
Mark Schultz, yeah. Yeah, he was good at dinosaurs, obviously. <clears throat> Noah asks, who's your favorite comic book, uh, what's my favorite comic book decade and artist? Um, well, probably just today. Like, whatever comes out, like, uh, today is the most exciting for me because it's new. But, um... In terms of nostalgia, it's, you know, when I discovered comics and everything then was new to me. That was obviously an um, exciting time as well for me. And so that would be the uh, early to mid-80s. Um, that, that's definitely like when everything was new to me for the first time. And uh, have a lot of affection for the comics of that day. And uh, artists that I discovered at that time that I remain affectionate for definitely include um, Mike Zek is, is pretty high up there of guys that I discovered at that point in time that I still really get excited by his artwork. Just dropping on some some of the areas that will be almost completely black. Just trying to if I can lock that in, it'll uh, speed me up later. Now I can go back to my thinner brush and uh, start dropping in some detail. Let's see. Any questions? Life in Hell by Matt Groening is my favorite comic strip. Also, Beetle Bailey. That's interesting. I do find um, Life in Hell very funny, or at least I did uh, when I sort of discovered them around the 90s. That was pretty cool. Um, Beetle Bailey, personally, I don't really like that as a comic strip. And I'll tell you what bothers me the most about it is that the, uh, the artist made his main character have that like low slung hat so that you can't see his eyes and that consequently means that like we can't usually get a great reaction or expression out of him you can get some but when you when you sort of hide the eyes it just sort of like hides a lot of a cartoon strips uh, emotions and character and uh, I just always found that kind of like lazy and, and I just don't like it Somebody you're talking about, um, somebody's in there, a bunch of you are talking about a channel and I missed it. I, I don't know what's getting discussed, sorry. <clears throat> Crichton called science an outdated belief system in the first novel. Did he? I don't even remember that now. That's funny. <clears throat> hmm. Sorry, I don't know if this is right. Uh, uh, hello, first of all, to Risaku. 
And if I've missed you, um, I'm sorry that I didn't say hello. I'm trying to say hello to everybody. Hair Bear says, uh, I find it funny that Beetle Bailey wasn't originally a military comic. I think he was a college student, got drafted in Vietnam, and has been a soldier ever since. I honestly don't know if that's the case. If that's the case, I've never heard that. That's so interesting. Clay says he miss, misses Ben Day dots in comics. Yeah, that was an interesting texture. Uh, Mandel, Mandela Butterfly says that he likes uh, Garfield. Yeah, I don't I don't really care too much for Garfield, but I did when I was very young, so uh, yeah. Um, my favorite comic strip uh, ever would definitely be uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Another that's pretty high up there would be um, The Far Side by uh, Gary Larson. Uh, so those are definitely like my two big favorites. I'm trying to think of like any others. Um, I, took, I guess I don't really read uh, newspaper strips anymore, so uh, yeah, I can't think off the top of my head of what else uh, excites me all that much. Or makes me laugh, anyway. Um... I don't know if it's still being published, uh, the strip Monty, but back when that was Robot Man, that, that used to frequently make me laugh. Comic strip Spider-Man. Comic strip Spider-Man always frustrated me just because there was so much recapping. It moved so slowly. Um, yeah. Oh, that comic strip. Nothing, nothing. It was always just like Peter Parker talking to people. And I was always just like, come on, get me Spider-Man. And Spider-Man would be there. And he'd mostly just be like swinging around, not like really doing much of anything. Uh, anytime he had a fight, it was like a punch, you know? It was never very exciting. Uh, that was never my favorite comic strip, unfortunately. That one just frustrated me. John Campera's Spawn video. I don't know who John Campera is, I'm afraid. No, sorry, folks. I'm out of touch. I'll have to look that up later. I'm out of touch. You're out of touch. But I'm out of my head when you're not around. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to demonetize my video if I sing like that. I just, that was too perfect. <clears throat> oh, teenagers these days, the comic. Uh, yeah, oh, that's what you're... Take his guy on High and Lois. Yeah, I don't think I've really ever read, read that one. Uh, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, it doesn't interest me much.
So I uh, don't mean to get intentionally like this quiet. Let me um, take another look at the chat room in just a second, and maybe uh, something there will prompt me to go in an interesting direction storytelling-wise. Let's say anything in here. <sighs> um, any questions? I'm looking through this for questions. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta release an album of '80s hits. Thank you, Hootie Zombie. Uh, favorite dinosaur? Oh, probably the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, I suppose. It's the one that excited me the most as a kid. I think some of the ones that I learned about as a kid are not necessarily dinosaurs anymore. Uh, like science has determined that, that they didn't have it quite right. So sometimes I can't keep up with what the latest info is. Brachiosaurus. The T-Rex looks almost finished. Um, not quite actually. I, I definitely want to add some texture, especially to like the feet, the neck, a um, couple other areas. So um, the form is there, the big shadows are there, but how I sort of blend them and where I give this guy some texture to make it actually look halfway decent, uh, if I can, still to be determined. But it's getting there. It's getting there little by little. What superhero movie are you most looking forward to right now if you have one uh, do, 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 do. there's a question but there any word there about that spawn cartoon that never appeared um not 100 percent sure what you're talking about there see kim i mean there was the hbo one uh like a couple decades back uh that happened for a little while um, and then like these days McFarlane is just putting all his efforts into um, you know he, this new live-action spawn movie that he's got Jamie Foxx starring in that he says is gonna be sort of horror and spawn isn't even gonna be the main character I don't know what to make of all that but uh, that's sort of where all of McFarlane's energy seem to be directed as far as developing uh, Spawn into anything other than the comic. Here's a random question I'm throwing out to everybody. What was the first uh, concert you went to? 
uh, by yourself or with friends, something your parents drag you to as a child doesn't count. Okay, so that's Son of a Red Shirt asking about the first concert. I would say the first one I went to was probably um, Pearl Jam and the Ramones back in like 95. It was pretty good. I still like both bands a great deal. Quip Tukey says, uh, con uh, first non-high school band concert was X and Rollins and Band. There you go. Um, Care Bear was uh, The Cutters. Oh, C. Kim has Fugazi. C. Kim wins. <laughs> it's hard to beat that. That's pretty cool. Wait, so C. Kim, are you from um, by the D.C. area originally by any chance? Just, you know, just curious if that's uh, maybe where you saw them. Um Oh, nice. Voodoo Zombie was Misfits in 96. That's kind of cool. That's a cool-looking T-Rex. Well, I hope so, but thank you. That, that's really kind of you. Alan Parsons and Christopher Cross in 2003. I didn't even know that like uh, Alan Parsons and Christopher Cross were playing as recently as 2003. Preachers in Disguise in 1990. All right, that's pretty interesting. I don't know them. Uh, Christian Nightclub. Okay. Bijou Comics says today is exactly, excuse me, one week since I've started drawing. Practicing right now on hands, they seem the hardest by far. You know, um, that's probably true. That's probably true. But there's definitely things you can do to uh, improve, uh, including looking at your own hands. Uh, and another th technique you can do if you're really having trouble, you can like take a, like a marker and divide this up into like sort of like a square and then d like draw lines across your knuckles so that like these are rectangles. Draw like some rectangles by like just drawing lines across on your knuckles and all of a sudden you can like move it into any position and you'll see uh, you know those shapes represented as rectangles and blocks and if you can draw in the blocks it's very easy to then just sort of draw in some knuckle detail or things like that if, if you're just starting out it's, uh, it's a decent way to, uh, to practice I think
Anyway, that was an interesting question, son of a red shirt. Thanks. Thanks, pathetic uh, spider boy. Appreciate the compliment. Let's see. Draw some hand bones. That's probably the toughest, but the best method. Absolutely. You know, when you're when you're learning something for the first time, uh, instead of drawing necessarily the finished result that you're looking for, uh, take some time to draw at least a few times the things like the underlying structure of uh, skeleton and uh, and muscle. Um, do that a few times, and it's pretty easy to cover that up with uh, skin. Just like after you've drawn a nude body a few times, it's not as hard to uh, cover it up with uh, clothes. Billy Idol. Billy Idol. That's that's awesome. That's a cool one. T-Rex could only run about as fast as a human. Hmm. Interesting. Well, keep in mind that the dinosaur in Jurassic Park was technically not a real dinosaur, of course. It was a genetically bred uh, thing that that was supposed to be based primarily on dinosaurs but of course they didn't have all the genetic information so you can sort of do some cheats when you're doing sci-fi like that when you're saying well it's the best shot they, they the scientists had at creating a, a dinosaur but it isn't technically a dinosaur Anybody discover any uh, good movies lately? Um, I'd love to go out and see some movies. I just don't know if I have the time. Getting close to wrapping this guy up. Um, I've been coming up on an hour, so that feels good. Bad Times at the El Royale is good. I, I, I do want to see that one, I think. First Man, somebody recommends. I like that. That, that looks interesting. Um, Halloween Left You Disappointed. Ah, that's frustrating to hear. I really was uh, hoping to go see that one. Um, at the same time, if I'm being honest, like none of the sequels are necessarily great. There's two or three that are okay. So I can't be totally stunned by that news. Well, we're getting to the close, or not, not right away, but, you know, I'm getting towards that point. So uh, how should I end uh, this one? Um, maybe some, some flawless impressions. Does anyone uh, 
have an accent or, a, or an actor that they want to hear a completely perfect impression of, that, uh, that tends to be a decent closer to these streams. Let's see, uh, what's being discussed? <clears throat> Upgrade, yeah, totally agree on upgrade being great. Um, that's good. Uh, the rider is good. Fire and ice. Uh, what else? It's a really good lecture on Dr. Dave Hone on T Rex. Oh, Tom Hardy for president. Hey, welcome, uh, Django Fett. Thanks for uh, dropping in. Appreciate it. Thank you all for uh, for you know a lot of you guys have been here for multiple streams at this point. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, I hope uh, hope you're getting a little something out of it, like some good conversation, at least with each other. I know that I drop in and out, so uh, I'm only an average host. <laughs> um, but I, I, I appreciate y'all being here. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, occasionally some really amazing questions that, that keep things lively and interesting. Uh, let's see. Sean Connery trying to sound American. Oh, that, that's easy. Uh, let me see. Hello. I'd like a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger, please. This is Sean Connery American. <laughs> uh, see ya, Alan. Let's see, um, what else? Jeff Goldblum's... Uh, Becca Lynn, uh, mm, says to do an impression of, oh, uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, mm, mm, oh, oh, mm, uh, what we have here is a, uh, uh, uh dinosaur, and, uh, mm, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yes, okay then. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, do the voice of the dad from Dinosaurs. I totally don't remember what he sounds like, but I'm assuming it's some sort of like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm the dare dinosaur. All you other dinosaurs are, uh, lunch meat. I'm the big boss around here. And I, I don't know what, it, what was he basically Fred Flintstone? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Hey, where's my brontosaurus steak? No, they wouldn't eat each other. Excuse me. Um, uh, I don't know what he'd sound like, I guess. I just don't remember. If I don't remember, I can't do a perfect impression. That That's a valid excuse, though. Otherwise, if I if I knew, I'd do it. Christopher Walken? Uh, asks Sigamigs. This is a dinosaur. I don't know. That's perfect, so I'll just move on. Uh, soccer hooligan Paul McCartney. Oh wow! Oh, let's go to the let's 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 all go to see a soccer match. Oh, don't you know I'm one of the the Beatles, but I also love them soccer hooligan matches. Perfect. Uh, Sean Connery playing a Spaniard. McLeod, you must keep your head on, or else you'll lose your quickening. Uh, let's see. Bob Dylan forgetting his own lyrics. Oh, hello, Mike L. and Mikey Jesus. Let's see. Uh, 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 oh, God, and I'm blind. I'm singing the song. I forget the lyrics, but I cannot go wrong. So that that was perfect. Uh, Eddie Forgetter. Eddie Vetter forgetting his. Uh, hey. Singing a song. Uh, these are going coming too fast. I mean, I'm nailing them all. You know, I've obviously done every single accent flawlessly. If you didn't see me on camera, you'd go, "Oh, that's that actor." Um, uh, Jimmy, ah, oh, oh, old man Potter. He won't let the dinosaurs out. He's just a mean old curmudgeon. He just keeps them all to himself. That mean old Potter, why he wouldn't share a dinosaur if it was his last dinosaur on earth, I tell you what, Mary. Uh, Meatloaf doing Eddie from Rocky Horror. Doing Eddie. I think it sounded a little something like this. Uh, 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 
Uh, John Lovitz doing We Didn't Start the Fire. We didn't start the fire. It's Patrick Stewart picking out ice cream at a parlor. Ah. Yes, I see that you have a Butterfinger Blast here. Let me get some of that Butter... I don't know. That sounds too much like Sean, Sean Connery. I'm getting tired. Uh, Godzilla should do a cameo in the next Jurassic Park. Yeah, that would just basically be his foot stepping on this thing. <laughs> uh... Number one. I want you to order me an Earl Grey ice cream cone. And if they can't do it, get Chief O'Brien to fix the replicators. Because I think that would be a very popular flavor. We all want to have a bit of Earl Grey tea ice cream, I would, I would imagine. <laughs> These are terrible. I don't know why I'm being so mean to all of you and to myself. We don't. None of us need to hear this. Oh, you you kind souls putting up with my exhausted shenanigans. Um, you kind, kind, very kind people. Thank you for the challenge. Chris Pratt as Star-Lord making fun of Spider-Man. Um, uh, dude, those are terrible webs. You, you should spin them like this. I, I, what's Chris Pratt sound like? He's just like a regular guy. Ryan Reynolds making fun of Green Lantern. I, he did that himself in his last uh, movie, didn't he? Chris Wong and his pissant Snyder cult. I don't know who Chris Wong is. John Malkovich, the guy from the Jewel Heist movie. I don't know him as the guy from a Jewel Heist movie. Uh, Gangsta William Shatner. <sighs> Bug life. Ah, forever. Your Jimmy Stewart was decent. Oh, Jimmy Stewart. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, some real treats in there. Some real treats. Uh, I can't do impressions. Obviously. I like to try. Can't really do them. Every once in a while I accidentally do one okay. Every once in a while. Anyway, um, this is more or less uh, done, I guess. Uh, sort of act like it's stomping on something or other here. Something sort of like some mud or that. I don't know. And, uh... Clean this up a tiny bit there. A couple of loose uh, pencil marks here and there that don't really add to anything. But uh, yeah, I'm fairly happy with this. Uh, sometimes it's easier to draw something that like we don't know what it looks like because. Uh, it's harder to say that it's wrong, you know, like a person, we have all seen a person, so as soon as a hand or an eye is drawn incorrectly, you can just, without even trying, you can just sort of sense, oh, that's not quite right, but you know, even though we've seen a couple dinosaurs in various movies, like, it's it's still, by and large, you know, just, just a human guess. It might as well be fictional, because this is just an interpretation that we've sort of seen a couple times. So there isn't really a right or a wrong way to do this. Um, which makes it a little, a little more easy uh, for the artist to just sort of 
have fun with whatever details they feel like focusing on. You can probably see that I'm just sort of dropping in a few last minute details on uh, on this guy, just uh, just having a little bit of fun, basically. And then I got to uh, get right back to working on the next uh, comic tropes for everybody. Um, still got one more to go for October, sort of a uh, horror themed, and then uh, moving on to just back to sort of back to normal, more or less. I think that adds uh, a little depth and character to this little guy. That's right, little. This guy has been shrunk. <laughs> um, this looks so good. Becca Lynn, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what's tomorrow's theme? Great question, Voodoo Zombie. Uh, and Django Fitz is Christian Slater auditioning for Spider-Man. Hey, man, uh, just here for... The Spider-Man audition. I'm a uh, Peter Parker, you see. <laughs> Comic tropes as Dracula. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dracula. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Name's Dracula. That's me as Dracula. Um. Oh, I guess I, did I bring up my phone? I might not have brought up my phone. Let me see. I didn't. I don't know what the prompt for tomorrow is. I don't have my phone. Um, tomorrow's theme is Muddy. Oh, maybe this would have been a better one for Muddy. Um, but I can think of some characters that are muddy or, uh, situations that are muddy. Um, and I remember Prisoners of Gravity C. Kim. I watched a bunch of it. It's, it's not bad. Got a big plan for Aquaman in December. Not quite a big plan yet. I'll probably talk about Aquaman in some context. Um, still giving it some thought. Um... Could always talk about Ramona Fraden, uh, who illustrated most of his stories. You know, one of the first super successful women illustrators in comics. Uh, could talk about what Peter David did when he sort of butched him up by giving him a hook hand and stuff. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. Muddy, do Arnold in Predator. Yeah, that could be interesting. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is definitely one I was already thinking of uh, there, Bijou Comics, so uh, maybe. Uh, somebody says... Pokemon Mudkip. I'm not sure what Mudkip looks like off the top of my head, but not a bad suggestion. Man Thing, of course, yes. Yeah, same ideas with uh, uh, Swamp Thing. Definitely a, a muddy character. You got me while I was feeding on the blood of a victim. Speaking of victims, let's talk about the people who actually paid to see Suicide Squad, like me. Good one, JoJo. Uh, Prisoners of Gravity was probably my first experience with a full-on genre-driven show that was aired to a happy little geek like me. So there you go, uh, see Kim. There's another person that watched uh, Prisoners of Gravity back in its prime. Clayface. Clayface is a pretty good suggestion, actually. That, that that's mud honey. Clayface. Lots of people like the idea of Clayface. That I mean, Tara from the Outsiders comic. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, Tara. Tara's not bad, but uh. So far, like, I was already sort of, like, as soon as somebody said muddy, I was leaning towards 
man thing, but I also really like Clayface, and I really like the idea of um, Harry Mudd from Star Trek. But I've done two Star Trek pieces this month, so maybe that's pushing it. I don't know. Um, Predator hiking in the mud? Maybe. There's a little bit of a closer look at uh, my T-Rex. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty happy with this T-Rex. I feel like uh, the thing I got right off the bat was more or less its form. And everything else sort of fell into place since the form was more or less there. Uh, muddy Waters, Man-Thing versus Swamp-Thing. There you go, just a total muck monster fight. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to take off, folks. Um, Philip Flores is here. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm glad that, that uh, folks like it. That, that's cool. Everyone will probably do Clayface. Well, I don't know. Clayface is a good suggestion. Man thing could be fun, and so could uh, Harry Mud. So there's a lot of great suggestions for for Muddy. Um, Kwame from Captain Planet was his power Mud or something? I didn't watch Captain Planet, but oh, probably Earth, right? His power is probably Earth. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna take off, folks. Uh, we hit, we we went a little over an hour, so so that's perfect for me. That's about what I'm trying to hit. Uh, I'm gonna go back to work on the next comic trope, so that you'll have that this coming weekend, and. Uh, Thank you all for being here. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, if I'm lucky, I'm going to be able to do it uh, earlier. I, I was trying to do it earlier today, but I ended up just doing a ton of chores and other work, uh, boring stuff. But, you know, at least it isn't super late. But tomorrow I'll probably do earlier. So um, thanks, everybody. Keep reading comics.